Hello, good morning, and welcome to this Dawn Busters Taste Challenge. <laughs> I have from 1967, not this bottle, of course, but the brand Sir Malcolm Blended Scotch Whiskey. Now owned by the Sazerac Company. Who must be redoing their website because nothing's linking. You know, when you hit, just it's not working. All right. Uh, Hopefully, hopefully it doesn't take as long as Miller Genuine Draft, which has been reformatting their website for five years. <clears throat> Makes you think they're not going to do it, right? Okay, and then we're going up against King Robert II. Big 1.75 liter glass bottle. I bought this at World of Beverage in Georgia. I was with John and Ely. It's a big bottle. It was $18.99. I figured that's a great deal. Uh, this is from at least 1968. It has to be older because Ian McLeod Company says they purchased the King Robert II line in 1968. Well, that means it was around before that. But I could never pin down when. Okay, so let me check something real fast. <clears throat> What's going to win? Um, oh, it was $9.99 for a Sir Malcolm. You might be able to get the big bottles. They're plastic. You might be able to get the big bottles around here for $16.99, maybe. Aged, uh, well, no age statements. That means three years. Imported and bottled. By the Sir Malcolm Company, Frankfort, Kentucky. Yeah, uh huh. Not a real company. It's Buffalo Trace, which is actually owned by Sazerac. So Buffalo Trace isn't really a company. It's an operation. It says right here, we love to hear from our customers. The one eight hundred number www.sazerac.com. And they're good with customer service. I'll give them that. I've never seen King Robert II around here. And there's a whole line. It's a whole line of liquor. Okay. It's like Taka or Fleischmann's. They've got King Robert II, Blend of Scotch. There's a single malt, 12 year age. By the way, I never saw that. Well, I wasn't really specifically looking for it. It might have been at World of Beverage, but I know it wouldn't have been this price. Uh, there's the gin, the rum, the etc. <clears throat> Sir Malcolm, you just have the blended scotch. Now, I think the King Robert, yeah, it says age three years, so we got an age statement there. Mariners are beating the A's three to nothing. Oh. Bottom of the fifth, that game's going quick. Oh, well, hour and a half into the game, okay. I'm going to have to go turn it on. Kind of hard to watch games this time of the day. And I was at a game last night, college baseball, so my day started late. I didn't wake up until 4.17, which put me back. I never even had a chance to check scores or anything. to the Mariners nine to seven yesterday okay <laughs> I'll have to get on that later so I went to the game and then I came home and I had to go to sleep and then I, it just I didn't have time to check anything 
I was laying in bed listening to LSU and Nickel State going to overtime, then I turned that off. All right, but anyhow, anyway, try to get things back on schedule as much as possible. Daylight's slowly coming into play, but very slowly. Uh, the King Robert is much darker. Now, the Sir Malcolm is that straw with like that greenish tint that you get with some of these things. Why it has that, I don't know. Sir Malcolm is golden with a little amber. All right. I'm going to answer YouTube comments this morning. Did so yesterday, had a lot of them before I went to the game. Alcorn State at Southeastern Louisiana University. Tulane was playing last night. University of New Orleans was getting killed 16 to 6. When I heard in the middle of the game by uh, like middle innings by South Alabama, I said, wow, thought UNO was supposed to be better. I don't know. Got to be sure not to tip these over. I was swishing around with my eyes closed the other day and I hit one and it fell over into the computer uh, keyboard. Not a good idea. Okay, so I can't be looking at it because it'll give it away. I don't know what's going to win. I don't think King Robert II is too hot. I mean, it's 1899 for the big handle bottle, and that seems about right because it's not too horrific. It's not horrible, but it's so basic. Whoa. Mmm. Smells like a lot of grain alcohol with a little peat. Smoke? No. Nope. Over here. <laughs> it smells like grain alcohol with no peat and no smoke. Like King Robert II. That was what I noticed about King Robert II. I was like, this is so basic. Maybe, maybe there's some peat, but if you're a big time scotch drinker, you're going to think, I don't see how you're going to just be negative about it. You know, you're going to say, what is this stuff is so dull. Now, when you smell it, it doesn't make you jump back like it's bad or anything. It just, it's so denuded. They're so, it's so vacant, vacant. I wanted to start this broadcast at 5.30, this telecast, whatever it's called, but I'm glad I didn't because it's still dark now at 6, and it was a full moon tonight, so talking about Central Time. This has got to be King. This has to be Sir Malcolm because you can see if you can, but by the shade, because it's got a little character, and I didn't think Sir Malcolm had exactly a whole lot of character when I did taste challenges. Now, in, on its own, it was okay. It's funny how on their own, they're all right. When you start putting them into play, it all falls apart. Then you realize why it was nine ninety nine. Okay, except for Clan McGregor, that one shines way above its price point. It's ten dollars or less, and it tastes like a twenty dollar or less. Now this one has a lot of candy sweetness. You say candy corn with scotch. Is that what you're trying to tell us? Yes. I mean, if you like sugar, it's fine. This one. Okay. Now. Yeah, it's got the candy corn thing. Candy sweetness, fine. But it does have a little peat character. And the King Robert II web page, because it's part of the Ian McLeod website. There might be a King Robert II website also. I don't think it's, no, I don't think there is. It's just the Ian McLeod, which is a very good website. But it's saying, uh, well, the flavor's coming from this single malt that they add, which I think they said was Speyside. That makes sense because your column still 
grain alcohol, grain whiskey, isn't going to really have any flavor or 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 aroma. It's not supposed to. It's supposed to be like a neutral thing. And then your flavor and note components are going to come from that 20, be about 20% of the uh, blend would be your single malts. You say, that sounds like a cheap way to do it. Yeah, well, that's why it's $9.99 a bottle. Or in the case of J.W. Dan, $8.99 for a liter, if you can believe it, which actually had more character than you would imagine, more than the, that's from Heaven Hill. That's who handles it in America, probably who, that's who owns it. You say, well, he's blended Scotch and Canadian whiskey and American whiskey. They like and, and Irish whiskey. They like filler whiskeys. They got filler. Yeah, that's what made Scotch popular was making the the Scotch with the filler, the uh, column still blended because at one time Scotch was considered harsh, smoky, peaty, and gross. And then some people like William Grant start the experimenting with uh, same thing with Amer same concept as American adjunct lager beers, putting uh, this. Uh, I don't know, what else what else would you call it filler like a a, a middle a, a big majority of no real flavor or aroma and then it softened it, the taste and the smell and then it became very popular scotch became very popular now with the onset of craft and specialty and small batch whiskeys and beers and wine then people wanted more exotic flavors so the single malt came back into popularity with whiskey the single barrel barrel select and all of that and with beer more of the back to the germanic roots the ryan heights idea of all malt barley water, yeast, and hops, and no corn or rice filler. And then, of course, the Americans, then you run into a problem with so much competition. You got so many things chasing not enough people. So then you start to go into adding in the gimmicks. I'm not against the gimmicks, but you get into that. Beer with the chocolate, beer with the wine grapes, beer with this, beer with that, beer with fruity pebbles, beer with cocoa crisp use bourbon with scotch scotch with bourbon scotch with irish canadian with bourbon to try to differentiate themselves i'm not saying that's bad i'm saying that's why and then then you get people that more want the more purified items the more classic the purest if you want to call it they say, no, no, it's bad. It's it's not the original concept. You're undermining the whole culture of it. Like with baseball, designated hitter, 1973. You're undermining the whole concept. You lower the mound because you want to artificially increase runs. And, and so you can go on and on about all that. And it's the same thing with these products. You say, well, that, you act like it's a problem. I didn't say it was a problem got to wade through all the stuff. I don't know why more choice would be a problem. I have more of a problem with it in sports where you're artificially changing the game. That's a problem. All right. This one here on the left has really no flavor aside from sweetness, sugar. I mean, if you like I know people like sugary drinks. I just try to avoid that stuff, really. But um, it's kind of like a sweet drink. I don't know what else to tell you. It's like you say, well, you could add, you could make a mixed drink with it and add stuff. Well, why would you do that? Because it's already sugary. You say, that's not really what I think of when I think of Scotch sugary drink. Well, I'm telling you, that's what this is uh, now. Over here, you got some scotch characteristics not a lot some it is a scotch yeah it's got smoke and peat more peat than smoke like somebody telling me well blended Amer blended whiskey is not true whiskey 
it's a style of whiskey. It is a true whiskey. I didn't say it was good necessarily, but it's a true whiskey. You get the same beer snob. And then this is a guy that preaches against beer snob. He, he, he preaches against it and practices it, which I find you should practice what you preach. But um, same thing with beer. If it's a blended beer, you know what I mean with uh, adjuncts. That's not a true beer. All right. Beer snobbery. Okay. You say, well, you're worried about that. I'm not worried about it. It's, I'm not worried about it at all. In any way am I worried about it. I see, I'm just commenting on it and observing it. I'm not worried about it. I guess the one in my right hand is better. I would say it's kind of like a B minus at this time. Now, see, sometimes you score things at the time. They can change. Scores are subject to change. I had people commenting, well, you know, in 2013, you gave that beer an A minus, and now you're giving it an A. What happened? I mean, I don't know what happened in six years. Maybe the beer went down. Maybe the way I look at things change. I don't know. I can't explain that. I don't even ever go look up my scores for the previous review because I don't want to cloud my current review. And sometimes I'll be like, oh, Lord, I said it was a C last time. Now I'm saying it's an A. That's a more honest review. All right. The body is about the same on these medium. The finish is like medium, doesn't linger, doesn't drop right off. I mean, they're all right. I don't know what you think you're gonna get for $10 a bottle or less, because that's about what you're gonna get, something that's all right. Okay, check, clean up the comments. Okay, all right, well, Get a lot of the juveniles that show up. Some of them are 50 years old juveniles. Jeremy Vincent says, morning, Ronald. Morning to you, Jeremy. So uh, what would I recommend? Uh, what would I recommend? Um, would I recommend either one of these? Uh, I said I would recommend Sir Malcolm when I did the solo review. I liked it. Then I started doing taste challenges and it fell apart. Well, that's typical. Now, if you're approaches well i only want that 80 proof i just want the booze man i'm gonna mix it with coca-cola anyway well then fine then price shouldn't matter at all i would just get the cheapest junk on, on the market it's not gonna hurt you it's all very heavily regulated and all that stuff so um you can get some for 6.99 a bottle i'll say go for it now if you want flavor and standalone and you sip them and switch them around like a hoity-toity big shot you want to taste it examine it think about it then, yeah, you want to pay more. I mean, it's like buying an automobile. You say, I just want utilitarian purposes. I, don't, I, don't, I just want to get from point A to point B. I don't want any. Well, then you get the most base model you can. If, if safety is a factor, you look at that. It's like with any product. It, these are not complicated ideas. Although a lot of people don't actually think through think them through, I don't believe. Okay, so I'm going to say that this is the King Robert. Uh, excuse me, the second, and this is Sir Malcolm, and I think Sir Malcolm wins. But it's fine. I mean, let's see now. Oh, yikes. This is, I knew before I looked, Sir Malcolm, I could tell by that greenish gold color, you could see. Oh, well, okay, King Robert wins. It's actually bottled in Scotland. You say, that's the difference. They shipped the Sir Malcolm to America and bottle it. No, nah, that doesn't matter. <laughs> It's what's in the tank. When it gets shipped, it's what's in the tank. It's not. John and Neely says, good morning, Ron. Good morning to you, John and Neely. Thanks for watching. So um, hey, King Robert II, I have bad news for you. You can you've been getting beat. It looked <coughs> it looks nice, but um There's not a whole lot happening. It's just grain alcohol. It's it's alcoholic 
grain. It's a multi-grain, he said, a multi-grain, barley and mostly corn, yeah. Um, I'm not gonna get on the internet here and talk about how it tastes bad. It does not taste bad. Really, you go through all the examinations I've done and all the reviews, there really are very few whiskeys, brandy, gin, scotch, that I say, or Canadian blend, that I say are bad. It's just a level of, it's really a, le a flavor level. You drink this, it doesn't taste bad. You don't say, oh, oh that tastes so bad. It's just, oh, that tastes so tasteless, which to be fair, would appeal to many people. You say, well, who buys whiskey so they would have no flavor, a lot of people, okay? A lot of, it does have sweetness, which appeals to, because don't you see people eat sugar all day long? And then they wonder, why am I sick? I don't know, you eat sugar all day long, but, uh, but uh, so anyway, um, does a flavorless product appeal to a lot of people? It sure does. I know most people I work with, most people I know. You say, yeah, you from Louisiana. Hey, people in Louisiana, they Cajun. They like all the hot food, wrong. <laughs> I know so many people that want the blandest food. It's like, you want some red pepper? Oh, no. You want some hot sauce? Oh, no. You want some black pepper? Oh, no. I know a guy from Central America. I say, Pablo, don't. I say, isn't that a myth that people down in Nicaragua eat a lot of really hot food. He said, yeah, nobody eats that. I mean, some people do, of course, but he said, he don't want any hot stuff. I said, oh, go to Mexico. I went to Mexico. I stayed a week in Mexico. No hot food. Salty, too salty, but no hot. Okay. When I was in high school 30 years ago, over 30 years ago, and that was when this area was not as diversified because of refineries, Marathon, the huge Marathon refinery, one of the biggest in the world, all that. You got so many outsiders coming in from other parts of the country, so they don't like hot food, but it was more entrenched then, and we would get red beans and rice or white beans. You said, oh, I was a little kid, I would say it's so hot, or just spaghetti and meatballs. Your face would be sweating. But that's how those old ladies, Vic Nairs, wag, wag us back, Haydel, Labat used to cook at the cafeteria, at least at the cafeteria. But then I got used to it, you see, because you're eating it all the time. And I remember they would have kids in high school that were from. You know, we're from Iowa. My father works at Nalco. Okay. And they'd be like, I can't eat this food. It's so dang hot. Now, by the end of the school year, they were like, give me some more. You know, like they get acclimated to it and then they can't go back. Once you go there, you can't go back. You see. Be like if you were drinking expensive single malt scotch. You're not going to go back to this. I mean, you might because you want to save money, but you're not going to go back and think it's so good. Do they have people that drink only Sir Malcolm every day? Yeah, but that's what they drink. That's what, that's that's where they go. They go there and they go no further. Fine. If you're drinking a barrel proof bourbon, that's $82 a bottle. Oh, yeah. You're not going to go all of a sudden start liking 10 high. Not gonna go pay $8.99 for a bottle of 10 high and say, oh man, this is really exquisite. It's 51% straight bourbon, it's 49% grain neutral spirits. It's got all these delicate and intricate flavors. No, you're not gonna say that because you know that's not true. Johnny Dilly says, all hail King Robert. Right, and you routed me toward that. And and Johnny Dilly was like, you gotta stop the world of beverage. You gotta stop the world of beverage. And I'm like, I'm tired. I'm into the game. I'm like frustrated in this traffic, but I figured, yeah, he's right. I better stop. And I was very glad. <laughs> Jeremy Vincent said, King Robert not doing so great. Doing better than Sir Malcolm. I'm not a big on super hot food either, says Jeremy. 
he's not big on super hot food. Yeah, because you haven't, it's like you haven't experienced it. If you had grown up here, everything, so like when I go anywhere, or like on a trip, everything tastes dull. Except for some, you know, there are exceptions. I was about to say, except for some exceptions. That makes sense. Like I went to Chicago and there was a Mexican restaurant, but those people are probably from Mich Michoacan, Mexico, right? And that food was so hot. I was like, wow. But I mean, I'm used to it, so it was good. Or New York City. But generally, it's kind of bland. Well, most food around here is bland. What am I talking about? All right. That's the end. Neither product tastes bad. It tastes like cereal grain distilled. I mean, let's get down to the bottom line of all this. It tastes like distilled cereal grain product. Nah. If you want to drink distilled cereal grain product, this will be fine. I don't necessarily want to drink that, but um, you say, well, you could go buy some great value toasted oats, like the great value mimic of Cheerios and eat that. Right. It's going to taste bland like that. It's like if you put no sugar on it or no honey. It wouldn't taste any blander than General Mills Cheerios because they're pretty bland too. It's the same type concept. Nah. He said, oops, I thought you liked the other better than King Robert. No, I like the King Robert better. It has more character. And I, I'm not sitting here saying it has a lot of character because it doesn't really. But it has some. Some smoke, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I got it. I, I I got it confused. Nothing new, nothing new, nothing new. You say, well, after all these years of drinking those two brands, you can't tell them apart. Well, first of all, I haven't drank these. I have not drunk these for years. I barely drunk them at all. I don't have a lot of experience with Sir Malcolm and King Robert. Now, maybe if I keep drinking it, I'll get better at it. With the beers, Okay, I can tell those apart a little better because I have more experience. Some of the whiskeys I can tell apart, like uh, say the Jack Daniels Green Label, but I've been drinking, that's a big old liter bottle, I've been drinking and drinking on it. Drink. So I can kind of, as soon as I taste it, I'm like, yep, there's that corn grits. I'm like, give me a bowl of corn grits, give me some grits. Yeah, now whether that's a good. How do you not gain weight drinking all that beer, says Brian Rojo. Well, I gained a pound and 0.4 yesterday, because but it wasn't because of beer. That I went up to I went up to one. I weighed myself this morning. I was exactly 146.0, which is one pound over my target, which is 145.0. But of course, these things will fluctuate. But um, yesterday I drank two whole beers, two 24, two 12 ounces. Okay. But you know what? It's not usually the beer that's putting on the weight unless you're drinking a case a day. It's the food people are eating. Now, why did I gain 1.4 pounds yesterday? I ate all this church's chicken. I had two pieces and church's chicken is huge. I think they use ostriches or something because you go to Popeye's and they have little pieces of chicken, kind of little. Sometimes they're big, but they're not. You go to churches and they got this huge piece of chicken. It's like, I don't know, man. There's something illicit that they're doing, you know, like, how can this chicken be that big? They're killing like. I don't know, some kind of exotic bird. I don't know what they. All right. So it was huge. And then. Uh, of course, I had the green beans. Then the honey butter biscuit. You got to eat that. And then I had some dessert, which was a free. I had a coupon free apple pie. What is a free apple pie? It's that sugarized, syrupanized, cinnamonized, diced apples surrounded by a fried breaded object with sugar on top. You know that's going to put on weight. Jeremy Vincent says, moderation and exercise is the only way I can do it. It's the only way anybody can do it. Now, you can go buy these diet plans. You can go pay all kind of money and fail and all that. I invented a diet 
in 2001, 2001, called Eat Less, Exercise More. It's basic. I see people that get fat. What do I see them doing? Having bad metabolism? No. Nah. I don't see that. I see them eating enormous portions. They're like, I'm just going to eat a bowl of cereal. But then look at the bowl. I say, what family are you feeding? This is a serving bowl. This is not a regular cereal bowl, okay? There's no way you're going to lose weight. Then they'll get irate. Oh, yeah, judge me. Go ahead, judge me. I'm not judging you. Do what you want. I'm saying you're not going to lose weight. Ha ha, church is ostriches, says Jeremy Vincent. Yeah, right. Jeremy said, I gave up junk food a long time ago. Sugar is one of the worst things we consume, but you can't avoid it altogether. You can't avoid it altogether. Sugar is a necessary part of the food group. But you got to watch the consumption of it. When I gave up snacks, that's when I started losing weight. I, I lost over 30 pounds. I was getting chubby. Why is that? Eating. Eating snacks. Well, hey, how about that? All right. So it's... It's a victory for King Robert II. Is it worth buying for eighteen ninety nine a one point seven five milliliter uh, liter 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 liter? Sure, it's worth it. Is Sir Malcolm worth it for nine ninety nine? Mm. Hayes says I drink a lot of beer and I don't gain weight either. Okay. Jeremy said it takes discipline. It does take discipline. I do gain weight fast. So. Like this morning, did I eat breakfast? No, I did not. I'm going to eat some crackers with that, that, um, to call that stuff, potted meat, five crackers. That's it. Don't use too many onions. I use three small onions. Uh, Paul, three onions. All right. So, um, I mean, it's worth it because then you can say you tried it. You know what I mean? That's my whole fixation. People say you're fixated. Or you just want to try everything and just say you had it. Right. Exactly. So sure. It was worth $9.99 to get Sir Malcolm and drink it. And then I can tell people I tried that once. What'd you think? Well, it looked kind of green. But it wasn't terrible. Okay. So there's your uh, calling card for Sir Malcolm. It looks kind of green and it ain't terrible. No. Um, for lunch, I'll have the two tostadas, which thank you, David. He gave me those. He's, I said, don't give me your food. He said, I only paid 50 cents for it. You can have it. I said, all right. Corn tostadas, you know, they're baked, toasted, and they're like hard. I put the uh, refried beans on it. I chop up the uh, Martin's sausage from Prairieville, Louisiana. Put the I gotta go buy some onion. Put the onions and the hot, you know, and the cheese, the queso cheese that David gave me. Thank you, David. I put it in that toaster oven and slam it. It's getting hot. When that when that cheese, when that stuff comes out on that tray, that cheese is bubbling. You know, it's like lava. Blah, blah, blah. Then it cools fast and you eat it. Put the hot sauce and the black peppers. That's gonna be my lunch with some salad naturally, some spinach salad. So like, uh, hey, 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 no snacks for supper. Yeah, like five potato chips. It's all about the discipline. You say, you're going to do another taste challenge later today. You're going to do another taste challenge. This is, in fact, the case. Because this weekend, I'm not doing any taste challenges, so I have to do that. You heard what I said? I have to do that. Yeah, right. Um, mostly drinking Miller Lite, though, not a huge thing in carbs. I'm not like you, Hayes. I can drink all day long. If I do gain weight quickly, you're definite. If I do, I'll gain weight quickly you're definitely lucky jay is right finding balance 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 do people using smartphones have balance uh you think about that think about what you see day to day you say why isn't the person turning the light turn green turn 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 oh how you think they're going to turn they're looking at their notifications on their smartphone, their addiction. He said, they got a cop. He's on duty guarding this uh, grocery store. He's on duty. What's he doing? Looking at his smartphone. Every cop 
I see is looking on their smartphone, driving. I mean, so, you know, it's like, hey, I, you say you're anti-cop. No. I said every policeman I see or sheriff's deputy I see is looking at their smartphone even whilst driving. Did I say I was anti-police? Okay, that is an, an explanation of an observation or a description of an observation, okay? Hey, says that might be because I'm 23 years old. Ha <laughs> ha. Might be. All right, that's it. And so later on today or this morning, we're going to do another taste challenge. And it goes on and on. When will it stop? Well, you know, time will tell. Thanks for watching this video production.